Here are the three problems that I'm going to be doing today. Now, to do these problems, there's a few things we need to know as a prerequisite. This GCD up here, that stands for Greatest Common Divisor. You need to know that. This Greek symbol here, you need to know about the Euler Totian function. And finally, this mod n, you need to know about modular arithmetic. If you don't know about any of them, then have a look at my videos on the three subjects. I'll leave some links up on the top right in the next few seconds. OK, let's go to the first question. So the first thing to notice here is, is this show by calculation. We're not going to prove anything. We're just going to put in numbers and see that Euler's theorem in this case applies. So we're told that n equals 10, and we're going to consider all the numbers a that are less than 10. And if we go up here to start with, we can see we need to consider all the a's, the numbers less than 10, uh, that are positive integers, and have a GCD with the number 10 equal to 1. So the numbers that satisfy all those conditions are the numbers 1, 3, 7 and 9. So because there are four of these numbers, we know that phi of n over here is equal to 4. So Euler is now telling us that if we take any of the numbers a equals 1, 3, 7 or 9, raise them to the power 4, then it will be equivalent to 1 modulo 10. In other words, the remainder when we divide it by 10 will equal 1. So let's go through it quickly. 1 to the power 4 is equivalent to 1. 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81, which is equivalent to 1 mod 10. 7 to the power 4 is 2401, which is equivalent to 1 mod 10. And 9 to the power 4 is 6561, which is equivalent to 1 mod 10. So that's all we need to do for that first question. On to the second question, and here we're asked to work out a high power um, in Z26. So this Z26 just means that we're going to be dealing modulo 26 for this question. And the first thing, well, the first thing to say is there are other ways to, to, to work this out. You don't have to use Euler's theorem generally. Uh, if you're interested in that, have a look at my video, Modular Exponentiation Made Easy where I go through a number of different ways to solve it. But here, we're told we have to use Euler's theorem. So because we're modulo 26, and we've got this 7 here down in the bottom, that's like the A in the previous question, first thing to note is that the GCD of 7 and 26 is in fact 1. So we can use Euler's theorem. Now the next thing we need is what's the value of phi 26, and there is a formula for it, and you can see the formula here gives us the answer 12. So this is so Euler is telling us that 7 to the power 12 is equivalent to 1 mod 26. So we somehow have to use 7 to the power 12 for this question, which is 7 to the power 133. And the way we do that is to use the, those power rules or exponentiation rules that we learned about in high school. So 7 to the power 133 is the same as 7 to the power 132 times 7 to the power 1. And why did I do that? Well, 7 to the power 132 is 7 to the power 12, all to the power 11. And then we just multiply by that extra 7 that we had. Now, 7 to the 12 by Euler is just equal to, or equivalent to 1. So we've got 1 to the power 11 times 7, and that just turns out to be 7. So the answer is 7. Before I go on to the last question, um, I have about 30 videos in this playlist, the Made Easy playlist whole range of things from uh, late high school, early university, where I go through typical exam or test questions. I've also got some other playlists with a whole range of things about uh, E, Pi, the largest number, how JPEG, Google search, uh, CT scans work using basic high school maths, and also some introductions to some of the important theorems um, and ideas in mathematics like Fermat's last theorem and complex numbers. So have a look at them if you're interested. Now we go on to the last question, and this is a little bit harder, uh, but I thought it was worth going through. Uh, a little bit frightening at the start because we've got all these variables, P, Q, A and K. It's a, it's a little bit overpowering. So we've got P and Q are distinct or different primes. So you might want to think of them as being like 7 and 11. Now A is any positive integer that's less than both P and Q, those two primes. And K is any positive integer. 
and we have to prove this ugly thing here. And we're told the hint is to use Euler's theorem. So if we think about Euler's theorem, Euler's theorem in the way I've expressed it previously has been modulo n. Here we're dealing modulo p times q, or modulo pq. So the n is being replaced by pq. Now we know for Euler's theorem, we had n and we had that phi n as the power. Um, so here we're going to have to have phi to the pq, or phi to the p times q. So... Now the next thing which we can think about is that GCD condition. Now because A is less than both P and Q, the GCD of A and P times Q must be equal to 1. I'll let you think that through. Um, so what, what this is saying is we can use Euler. And Euler tells us that A to the power of phi PQ equal, is equivalent to 1 modulo PQ. Now somehow we've got to get a K in that because we can see in what we're trying to prove there's a k in the power. So let's raise both sides to the power k, which gives this line. Um, so now we've got 1 on the right-hand side. We want a. So let's multiply both sides by a. Now because on the left-hand side we're multiplying by a, we can just add 1 to the power. So we've got a to the power of k times 5 pq plus 1 is equivalent to a modulo pq. And now we can just put in the formula for phi of p times q, which is p minus 1 times q minus 1. And that then completes the uh, proof. Now, this is an interesting problem from another, uh, another reason, and that is that um, this sort of starts to hint at uh, encryption. We start off with a letter, uh, some number a, and this is saying that we go through all this process with these powers and modulos, we get back to a. So in a way, this is sort of combining encryption, which takes A to some encoded value of A, and decryption, which takes that encoded value of A back to A. You start off with A, you end up with A. This is doing encoding and decoding in one step. And uh, mathematicians worked out a way to split it into two steps, which enables us to do encryption on the internet. So if you're interested in that, I've run out of cards so that I can put up the top right. Have a look at my videos, uh, how encryption works. That's the easier of the two. Or for all the details, have a look at RSA Code Made Easy. So that's all I wanted to say about Euler's Theorem. I hope you found it useful.